Hi, welcome back. Third part in the HMO mini series, how to rent and then manage an HMO. We've done find and fix already. If you haven't watched those, go back. There's a, we'll put it together in a playlist. So you've got those two sections in there as well. But today we're covering off how to rent the place out and then manage it ongoing. I think the first thing to say is renting and managing an HMO Renting and managing an HMO needn't be stressful or hard work, but if you let it, it will be. Um, more importantly, if it is, it's probably not worth doing. Uh, the whole point of uh, an HMO, really, really roughly speaking, one HMO equals three single letters. Let's put it that way, really roughly speaking. Um, you don't want it to be three times as much work as three single letters. You want it to scale disproportionately. If it scales one to one, you might as well not bother. Um, I guess my point is, unless you're doing it well, it's probably not worth the extra hassle. Just stick with single X. And, and one of the questions we get asked often is, should I buy single X or HMOs? I'm a fan of HMOs, but only if they're done right. So um, the six things, the usual six things that we need to focus on, three before you move the tenant in, and three once the tenant has moved in. They're the usual things, um, whether you're renting an HMO or, or a single X. Uh, however, there are quite a few more things under those headings, those categories, that you want to be looking for and, and managing with an HMO. The first one you've already covered off. If you've watched Find and Fix, you've got the right house in the right area with the right specification. And, and the first thing, the first line of defense, as we call it, is you, the property you bring to the street, and it being in the best order. And if you do that, you've got the best chance of success. You've got the best chance of attracting a, a good tenant. And that's true of any, any property, including a single let. It's even more true of a, uh, an HMO, of course, because the standards are so much higher. Um, a, a person wanting to rent a, sing, a single let property, you know, nice vanilla, blank canvas, move their own furniture in, fine. You, you are at the top of the market with that spec you wouldn't be with an HMO, you need furniture, you need nice nice crockery, pictures on the walls, painted right, a nice um, duvet, bed set, you know, all those things, all those things, you need to up the, up, the, uh, up the level in terms of the specification as well. So it's even more important with an with a HMO. So that's line of defense number one. Line of defense number two, you've got to choose a good tenant. You deserve one, you've got that prop, right property on the street, um, but you've got to choose them. Uh, we will still reference a tenant in almost ex actually exactly the same way as for a single let. The bar is ever so slightly lower. Don't forget, these are relatively cheaper compared to a single let house. Uh, the person living in there will probably be more transient um, in a lower paid job and they don't want to commit as much as a property. It stands the reason they're renting a room in a house, aren't they? So um, same criteria, but just a lower bar. They don't have to earn as much, etc., etc. All of our tenants are working, and if they're not, they've got a guarantor. The same rule as we apply for a, a single property. It's very, very rare that we would allow a tenant on, on benefits to move into a property. It's a completely different mix. Um, do consider a nil deposit. Uh, we, uh, and I don't mean not taking a deposit, I mean a specialist provider of nil deposit, that is an insurance backed um, deposit scheme. So instead of having to pay out maybe 500, 600 pounds, the tenant only has to pay 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds as an insurance. They do have to pay that every year. However, it reduces the amount of uh, money they need to move into the property. And that's quite a big deal when you're renting out cheap rooms. You will rent more properties if you have it. I wouldn't consider having no deposit there. A nil deposit and a zero deposit are completely different. A nil deposit is an insurance product. Um, do consider rent and legal insurance. You know, all of our um, well-referenced um, uh, tenants that are going to go into a property with totally the rent and legal guarantee um, product is totally available just as it is on a buy to let consider it because um, you will have slightly more voids and bad debts on an HMO just not many more we'll come to that in a minute that's, that's later on that's, that's the uh, for sixth sixth thing to consider um, so that's you've got, you've got your house first line of defense you're choosing the right tenant that's your second line of defense the third line of defense and we call them lines of defense because they all happen before the tenant moves in, then you've got no more defence. The third line is perfect paperwork. There is a lot more paperwork to rent a room. I say there is significantly more paperwork than rent a room. I'm not sure lot's the right word, but there's a lot. There is. There is. Um, 
You think it might be less, it's only a little room. There's actually more because there's more regulations, there's more complexities. Just think about the um, you know, having a shared inventory for all the pots and pans and the shared communal areas and the room and it's furnished and those things. So there's an inventory on a, uh, on a single at house might take a couple of hours. An inventory on an HMO will take all day. So that's just one aspect of it. And then there's more paperwork, licenses, regulations, all the things that are extra that need to be there or pointed out as well. It's not just paperwork, it's pointing out the fact that all these things are in your house and you've got to know how to use them. And there's that light switch and that's how you use the heating. And um, the, here's the rules and regulations of the house, all those kind of things. Do get it all right. Um, don't even think about skipping any of those um, licensing or building regulations or fire regulations. I see it far too often when landlords think it's either cheaper to skip it or it's just too much hard, hard work and I don't want to deal with it. And they skip it. It will. I've never seen it not come back and bite you. Um, either you know, legal action, <laughs> the council, you know, the bad stuff. Probably worse stuff in the the, the un, um, un, un sort of you know, people don't understand think, think that this is going to happen. It's the lenders are going to check you next time you want to come refinance it. Oh, we can see it's an HMO. Where's your license? Um, yeah, we well, want to see it. Yeah, we um, though, though, though all those things. Uh, when you're talking to the council, they'll want to know that your lender knows it is an HMO, for example, and they will check. They will write to your lender. So you know all those can't skip any of those things. Can't hide anything for anybody. Um, you change the windows. If it was a single and you didn't get a fence certificate, you probably nobody would probably ever find out until you sold the thing later on. The HMO officer will ask to see that fence certificate. If you don't have it, you won't get a license and you won't get lending. So perfect paperwork. It's not just the AST, the, 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 the tenant contract. It's everything. Make sure it's all perfect. There's your three lines of defence. Now the tenant moves in. And after move, move in, there's three more things you need to focus on. The first one, they're the same three things as, as with any single let. The first one is the renter relationship. Uh, it, it is important. Uh, consider the dynamic in a in a, in a in a house, in an HMO. It is important you get that right. Um, when we talk about the renter relationship in a single let, we're talking about just, it's a, it's a useful barometer of how we're doing as a letting agency, really, how you're doing as a landlord. If, the, if everybody's happy, generally speaking, things are going well. But there's that added extra um, layer of um, you know, soft touch stuff that we have to deal with on an HMO. Are the people that we've just put... Or are the people that are in there already, and this person we're just about to put in, are they going to get on? It does matter. So there's that. It's not going to be like um, you know, the set of uh, the sitcom Friends or anything like that when you go in, but it does matter. Okay, um, people do need to get along. Second focus is um, the fabric of the building. Uh, we, we'd call it the the ongoing management, the asset management, the uh, facilities management, um, maintenance. Now, all that. All those things there in an HMO, there's loads more. Whereas with a single let, we're going to do a good check-in, video, video inventory or a, a photographic inventory, a video inspection and a checkout, photographic checkout. We're going to do regular inspections and pretty much that's it, in and out, in and out. And uh, we know what we're doing there. With an HMO, you are going to be in there so many more times. There are more checks. Um, you need to be in the property at least twice a month, probably. Um, you need to check the fire alarms, uh, the smoke seals on the door, the smoke alarms, heat alarms. You need to check that the door closes work. You need to check um, that there's nothing on the back of doors. Um, you need to check that all of the um, um, areas are free for fire. All the signage is correct and still up. All the, all the, all the notices are still correct and in date and are being filled in. And you will get checked. You know, if you miss one of those things, um, something can come in from the council at any time, just walk in and uh, knock, knock, knock. Not walk in, knock, knock, knock. They have to let, the tenant has to let them in. But all tenants will want, to, that want that check, won't they? So they'll invite them in and you won't even know about it. They'll come in and they'll do the check. Some, some, some types of check they, um, they do have to let you know about. But yeah, the, 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 the thing stands. You're not going to be able to fudge this. You'll get found out. So um, we've trained our cleaners to be able to do almost all. We call it a risk management dashboard. I think there's a big saving here. Um, sometimes people say to us, God, your cleaners are expensive. I don't realise that our cleaners are doing a much bigger job. Also, we don't charge, as a letting agency, we don't charge extra for rent managing an HMO versus a single let. We have a almost like a, well, we've got a standard standard price for management, and then there's this layer on top, which is the extra management for, for an HMO. Uh, well, the principle is, whether you're using it as a marketing agency or you're doing it yourself, 
if you multi-skill that person that's in there anyway, cleaning the property, to do all those checks, print out notices, our cleaners carry a printer in the van, for example. Do a quick tenant turn, so our cleaners have a pot of paint, or the multiple different pots of paint and all the sheets and all those things to uh, tape everything off so there's no splash paint everywhere. To do a quick tenant turn in a room, they carry the bed sheets for um, dressing a room to take the photographs to, or, or to do the viewings. We've multi-skilled that uh, and there's a saving there. We worked out actually that all those extra things we would need to do if you wanted them separately, you wanted somebody to do the decorating separately, somebody who wants to do the fire test separately, so they'd have to go in all those other times, it costs more than the cleaning. So we send a cleaner in to do that at one cost. Um, you could almost say it's free cleaning, couldn't you? Or free the other thing, whichever way. We, roughly speaking, double our costs. So it's not expensive cleaners, it's um, cheap, all the other stuff. And that really, really works. So consider that getting yourself organised there when it comes to maintenance um, and, and, and the ongoing stuff. Um, a common thing I see, unfortunately, is because it does cost double, and we've managed to figure out a way of it not costing double, and we'll skip it. Don't, it will definitely bite you in the ass. Uh, and your quality of your property will also go down and you'll end up having uh, voids and tenants that don't want to, uh, don't, don't want to live there. Um, you've got to do things right. You, you also need to be available 24-7, 365, unfortunately. You will get calls with problems um, you know, in the middle of the night. I've lost my key. That is something in the fixing uh, bit of the mini series, I talked about the digilocks, things like that. There's, there's ways to get over stuff, but you're still going to need to be available. If you're not available, it will cause more aggravation, so do be available. You'll get more wear and tear as well, so don't be surprised if you get like, there's five or six people living in this property in or out. Things break more often, so um, factor it in, deal with it. Recharge it wherever you can, that's why it's important to have good inventory um, and good uh, inspections and also a checkout as well. So. Last of the three is the money. Um, our arrears rate on an HMO is slightly higher than buy to lets. Uh, our buy to let rate runs at about 1% and our HMO rate runs at about 2%. So it's, it's not a big deal, uh, but that's starting from a very low base. You know, a, a letting agency only having a 1% arrears rate, and I've talked about this in other videos, it's pretty exceptional. Um, mm. You know, if ours was a more normal letting agency with a higher arrears rate, because letting agencies, generally speaking, have higher arrears rates than we would we would tolerate at all. Uh, why they let it? They just do. We run we run a very tight ship. Uh, I don't know HMOs. Would they expect double? I mean, ours sounds it's double, but it's only two percent. And most letting agencies have a bigger arrears rate than two percent. But it is a fact that um, the transient nature of the tenants they will come and go more. Uh, check the rents every day, have a process that you're going to implement if the tenant hasn't paid their rent, a process to implement the next day, every single day up to the seven day point we serve a, a notice of, of, of intention on the seventh day and then 21 days later capping it at one calendar month we serve the eviction paperwork, no exceptions and if we have to follow through on that we follow through on it but I'll tell you now by having that no exceptions rule, the zero tolerance policy very, very rarely do we have to follow all the way through on it because well, they can, people see you're serious. If you don't mention to somebody that they haven't paid their rent for seven or eight days, you just tell them you're not bothered. If you tell them the afternoon they haven't paid, just checking you're paying it and watch your long card number, please, they know you're on it. And it's not unfair to do that. We're not harassing any tenant. And um, if you set that as the right, uh, that, that's the standard, uh, very often tenants might not be very often at all. If it's going to be tested, it'll be tested. and, and Often, if you do that, it, it, the, 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 the problem will disappear. So. Finally, uh, after all that, and as I sort of wrote down some notes, I've got some little bullet points here about that. I, I put a final one in there, which is, if I'd have done this list for single lets, uh, it would have been not half as, it would have been a quarter. So I think you're probably going to need some help, being totally truthful. Running one HMO can be quite a time drain, a little bit of a nuisance. Um, if you leave, leave those nuisance issues unattended to, they will become bigger problems, um, quickly run away with you, you know. 
running a few HMOs becomes a full-time job. And um, yeah, if you've got HMOs in the areas we operate, Nottingham, Derby, Mansfield, Stoke, Sheffield, check, I'll put a link in the, in the description, you know, take, a, take you to our hub page so you can see all the areas in the UK where we, uh, where we operate. Um, we'd love to come along and manage your property portfolio. HMOs included, singlets included, but to particularly talk about HMOs. I think it's too big a job to have a go at by yourself. Yeah. Running it well will make you more money. Voids will be less, maintenance will be less, um, rents will probably be a bit higher, we'll get things filled quicker. Um, you'll have less wear and tear, and any wear and tear you have, you'll claim the right amount back off deposits and those kind of things. Running that tight ship gets you that extra bit of margin, which let's face it, you've paid for because you bought the HMO and that was the whole idea. You do need to make sure you get that to make this whole thing worthwhile. So if you want us to manage your HMOs, get in touch. Um, there's a link to the uh, Discovery Call. Discovery Call is for people who want to grow their property empires and or become happy landlords, whether that's they've got a portfolio that want to just optimise and keep as it is, or have a portfolio they want to grow, or start from scratch and grow. All we cater for all time. So. Um, Get in touch if that's you, but for now, that's the end of the mini-series. I hope it was useful. Find, fix, rent, and then manage an HMO, or more than one HMO. I uh, hope you find it useful, and hopefully I'll uh, see some of you soon. Bye for now.